Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Ushanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Ushanka Show. So today will be the final fourth part of uh, Soviet story times, a story about my paternal family. See, I'm getting better. And we're going to talk about war experience of my grandfather, Trofim Matveyevich. Now, if you're interested in the subject of the Second World War and like witness accounts, I already have a video about my other grandfather, Grandpa Sergei. Uh, it's called My Grandpa Was a Soviet Soldier in POW. I'll post the link below this video in the comment section so you can check it out. It's very long. It's 24 minutes, just warning you. So once again, unfortunately, I don't have any photos of my grandparents, my paternal grandparents, so I have nothing to show you guys. Uh, so my grandpa, once again, Trofim Matveyevich, it was his name, and it's both names, like his father's name was Matvey. I'm thinking maybe becoming popular again, and Trofim definitely is out. Uh, so he was born 1902 or 1903. So when Germany attacked Soviet Union on June 22, 1941. So for the Soviet Union, officially World War II began only in June of 1941. Uh, my grandfather was already 42 year old and he had a total of six kids. In summer of 1941, well, as well as summer 1942, war for the Red Army was complete chaos and disaster. And I looked it up. Uh, Germans uh, took Zhitomir, which is the main uh, city of Zhitomir region, on July 9. So war broke out on June 22nd. So we got eight days in June. So basically in, in two weeks uh, they uh, managed to go as far as Zhitomir. So my grandfather Trofim wasn't drafted, and I said I have two different versions. Uh, according to my dad, he was hiding in the woods, uh, just kind of went in the woods with his friends and dodged the draft by the Red Army. And according to my cousin, uh, because Germans moved so fast, they just didn't have a chance to draft everyone. So I got these two uh, different versions of the same events. But in any rate, uh, he remained in the village, and he stayed there during the German occupation. Meanwhile, my other grandpa, Grandpa Sergei, uh, who lived more east and north, uh, he got drafted in 1941, and his uh, war didn't last long. Uh, he was captured sometimes in the fall of 1941, and then was recaptured again after he escaped first time. So as I mentioned in my previous story time, Grandpa Trofim, even managed to have another kid with his wife. My uncle Pavlo was born in 1943, so he was doing okay under German occupation. Not sure just being a peasant or what else he done, but uh, he did okay under German occupation. On December 24th, 1943, the Red Army began so-called Zhitomirska Birdyczeska Nastupaltina Operacja. So, so they attacked Germans in Zhitomir Birdichev area, which is right next to the village of my grandparents. Uh, that operation lasted from uh, December, as I said, December 24th, 1943, until uh, January 14, 1944. And guess what? On January 13, 1944, my grandfather got drafted into the Red Army. So this is your classic example, good news, bad news. Good news, Soviets returned. Bad news, I'm getting drafted into the army and I'm going to the war. And I have seven kids and wife at home with a newborn baby and six older kids. So that's pretty ugly situation right there. So when I was talking to my cousin Victor, who is on my paternal side, and asking all these questions about our grandfather, he's like, Dude, you can look yourself up. Um, his information is on the Russian uh, Ministry of Defense website called Pamet Naroda, the Memory of People. And it's a website dedicated to the World War II veterans. And they began declassifying their archives and posting personal uh, cases, like all the data of the Soviet soldiers. And my grandpa on the paternal side is there, 
but my other grandpa, uh, Sergei, unfortunately, is not there. So I looked it up, and sure enough, I punched my grandfather last name, first name, and father's name, Trofim Matveyevich, and uh, his information came up in quite detail. I was very amazed, but his uh, military service was uh, very, very short. As I mentioned earlier, he was drafted on January 13, and there was no boot camp, no initial training, nothing like that. He was drafted and began fighting, and he went missing in action on March 11, same year. So less than two months, uh, that was his military service in Red Army. So according to the Pamit Naroda website, uh, my grandpa was drafted into the 271st uh, Gorlovskaya Strelkovaya Divizia, so that's like infantry division. And that division had about eight skirmishes with Germans in that two-month period. And looks like there was a pretty big uh, like battle by the village called Svichno in uh, Kamenets Podolsky region. And that's when uh, war for my grandpa was over. So what actually happened, my grandfather was wounded and taken prisoner of war by Germans. But it looks like there was a quite a giant cluster problem there. There's a lot of back and forth uh, skirmishes all over that area by the Svichna village because uh, Soviets buried uh, 272 soldiers and officers. There was like this mass grave in that village and they thought that my grandpa was one of the killed because my grandmother received Pacharonka. That's the name of the notice that your husband was killed. So he was actually missing in action, taken prisoner of war but somehow uh, he's also was considered being killed and buried in that village Svichna. So on the same website I actually located paperwork for that mass grave. It has a coordinates, what type of monument was built, who's taking care of it, and the list of soldiers uh, that were uh, buried there. And my grandfather is on the list. He is a number 150 that he was buried in that grave. So that's Pretty scary and how it all went up, especially thinking about my grandmother with seven kids at home getting noticed that her husband got killed. I also managed to find additional paperwork like a list of the dead soldiers and the notices of their death were mailed to their relatives. When I searched for the 271st Gorlovskaya Infantry Division, they actually have their, it's not like a diary, but uh, every day the commander was keeping like a record what happened that day, weather, battles, supplies, and also I found uh, their maps. So I, I located, I think that was the correct map about that battle that my grandpa went missing in action. So that's pretty amazing information, pretty cool stuff. The same website, Pamit Naroda, also offers quite interesting uh, maps called Bayevoy Put. So there's like war path. So you can pick different division or whatever, and uh, you could see on the map how they moved across Soviet Union and later across Eastern Europe fighting Germans. So it's kind of a pretty neat tool that you could see how they moved, uh, where the battles were. So for example, the 20, uh, 271st uh, Infantry Division was organized by Crimea, uh, they defended Crimea in 1942, had to move out, and they went all the way back to Grozny. So Germans pushed them all the way to Caucasian mountains, and they moved back all the way through Ukraine, picked up my grandpa, lost my grandpa, and they finished their war path by way put in Czech Republic, not far from Prague. I also found this interesting document. So it was sent from Moscow. Uh, to Chudnovsky Rayon Nevayonny Commissariat. So that's the commissariat, that's the place when they track uh, military personnel. So Chudnov, that's the area capital, let's say it. And it says, uh, there's the list of people that were considered uh, killed or missing in action during World War II. And in reality, they were alive, so you need to uh, change your records. So there's a list. Uh, on 12 pages for 220 people. 
What I find really interesting, uh, this document dates from 1960. So 15 years after war was over, they still figure out who died, who is still missing action, and there's actually people who are alive. And across in a cursive, there says remove uh, from the list 169 people. Uh, so they change, uh, adjusting their paperwork according to what uh, came from Moscow. And on this list, number 159 is my grandfather. On well, here it says born 1903, uh, and uh, he was considered missing. Propal uh, bezvesti, that's the official term in Russian language, of missing in action, <clears throat> on March 11, 1944. And he was alive, so they sent document, please change your records. And there's another awesome find. Uh, so this is actual journal of the 20... 271st Rifle Division, and I found the page that dates to the March 11, 1944, when uh, my grandpa went missing in action. Unfortunately, handwriting is really hard to read, uh, but on the right side, towards the bottom, there's actually it says Nashi Patiri, so our losses, and it says how many people got killed. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. So there's a Every day report what they done, weather, losses, what kind of fights they had, and stuff like that. Pretty amazing document. And here's another document that my uh, grandpa name shows up. Uh, this is actually record of people that were uh, prisoners of war in Germany, and they got uh, freed. And the third from the right column, it tells you how long person was a prisoner of war in Germany and for my grandpa it's one year and two months a guy above it's three years seven months so I was told that Ukrainians were treated way better uh, by Germans than Russians and a lot of Ukrainians survived being prisoners of war like my uh, other grandpa Sergei he actually ended up working at uh, at the German farm for the local farmer and he was doing okay for being prisoner of war but then later he almost died in a soviet labor camp when he was uh, sent for being a traitor unfortunately i have no information where in germany my grandfather trafim was um, i'm gonna ask around my relatives but i doubt anyone has any information so that will be the mystery and this concludes our Ushanka show story time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you soon. Do свидания. Goodbye. to have a signed copy thank you and if you love my channel and would like to show your support please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka show for as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union